Okay, hello everyone and welcome to our third chapter of Hagora Talk Learning from China. A series of lectures that try to uh, hello, everyone, and, welcome and to, to bring the, the contemporary architecture of China closer to us. So last time we had Zhang Shen from People's Architecture Office about uncertain by architecture. And today we will, the topic of today will be architecture as a culture scape. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave it below on our social channel. And uh, at the end of the lecture, there will be a section of questions and answers. So let me present the guests of today. So Xu Chen Tian from uh, the Han Hei Studio of Beijing. So welcome. Hello, hi everyone. Okay, so probably Simone has um, some uh, problems. Okay, we are again. Okay, I'm, I'm here again. Okay, so I think that uh, we can start. So when you want to, your um, the stage is uh, is yours. So when you want to um, present your um, PowerPoint presentation, when you're ready, uh, you okay, can start. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Shi Tian Tian. I'm architect from Beijing, and um, it, it, today I'm gonna share our uh, four four of our projects and uh, in the title of architecture as culture scape. Okay. Um, so first project I'm go I will start with a um, a Hutong gallery in the historical uh, Bai Ta Si district in, in Beijing, in the center of Beijing city. Um, if you look at the picture, this is all the historical Hutong and courtyards district um, with a 50 meters tall um, giant uh, Buddhism pagoda um, built about 700 years ago and, and which has been, become the iconic landmark for over 700 years. So, um, the Liu Hutong Gallery is a conversion of an existing residential and two-story cement building and, and into a public space. Um, this is the kind of opportunity that in the Hutong, in the, in the kind of a, a, in this historical Hutong courtyards district that to accommodate can relatively larger public space for the community and also to attract visitors um, and new users. So um, uh, under this um, historical district preservation guideline, um, we are not able to touch you know, the, the overall um, envelope or um, the volume of this building. So the most of the engagement is to work internally um, by kind of a reorganizing the internal space into larger uh, um, public exhibition um, halls and also to accommodate like um, artist residencies, three small rooms in, in, this, um, in this community. So um, the idea is that um, we are only working with kind of a penetrating the corners of this uh, cement box. And the ground level is um, by removing some of the internal walls, the ground level can enlarge into uh, two major rooms. One is the um, salon area and the other one is the exhibition hall. And we also, we were able to kind of open up two corner yards. So the space will, um, this will allow the light, uh, daylight coming into the space. Also the fresh air too. 
Um, so on the uh, in interior um, exhibition space, we were also working with the kind of a, um, tearing up the corner um, um, on the on the roof to allow the skylight coming into the exhibition space. Um, and on second floor, you will discover that this kind of a, um, tearing corners kind of a, um, enlarge uh, somehow into, you know, by the, at, at the corners into the two corner uh, courtyards. So it has become kind of a, a continuous uh, fragment of curves in a space in and out of the, this uh, small Hutung gallery. Um, which we want to indicate that this is kind of a fragmented impression when you're wa walking in the Hutong, in the very narrow Hutong alleys that um, the pagoda, which is, you know, the kind of a landmark, the iconic um, object volume in the neighborhood is always kind of cut on and off by the, the scale, the dimension of the Hutongs. So we do want to bring this, um, you know, kind of a um, walking experiment in the Hutong um, into this building, like you have um, this kind of um, always changing or um, um, fragments of this um, pagoda impression. And that's how the roof uh, looks like. Um, and like I said before, this this the volume stays intact. So um, it's only with kind of a um, this penetration into the volumes uh, that uh, introduce the light into a light and air, and also the trees from neighbors coming into our space. And with this um, configuration on the roof, we were able to stretch up a. Um, plant shades on the rooftop. And this is also kind of a, a um, um, familiar element in this neighborhood that you have the um, um, green plants, um, kind of a, um, shades or um, uh, light structures in, um, in, the, in, in these um, alleys. So this also creates a, a, a different level um, or a different uh, layer of language on top of this Hutong gallery. It's a light canopy, the green canopy, just like the tree canopies from the neighbor. So in a way, this uh, Hutong gallery, even this is a very small uh, um, renovation or um, conversion, uh, it's on the, the ground footprint is only um, about 100 square meters, but it still try to accommodate not only the public functions, um, bring new activities, cultural programs into, the, into this neighborhood, but also try to create kind of a, a dialogue um, when you, how you experiment the space and it becomes kind of a continuous um, experiment uh, coming from the alleys uh, and walking, um, see the um, the pagoda, the giant pagoda, and also uh, walking into the space. And, and when you leave the this Hutong gallery and you, you um, um, look at the pagoda and some uh, somehow it will bring back the kind of uh, um, memory, you know, the, the, this um, the interior impression of this Hutong gallery can have kind of a create kind of a, um, a connection or um, dialogue with the um, the giant pagoda, and this is something um, you know with this um, artist um, residency and with this Wutong Gallery program that um, it all also carries a cultural message um, within its context. Um, and the next project is also a, another uh, museum of poetry, another small uh, size of public um, building um, in, in urban center in Songyang County. It's on the main street in its county and um, urban center. Um, and the museum is dedicated to the um, 
the history of poetry in this in this county, um, especially to this um, poem, um, Zhang Yunyang, who was uh, um, one of the most historic, uh, the, the, um, the three main historical figures, uh, the fe a female poem in, in, uh, in this region. And the site, um, we have this picture, the site um, by this place um, at the kind of inter, um, uh, the, the junction of two roads, it, it, it used to be the, uh, the tomb, the original uh, site, uh, tomb site for this, um, um, for the poet. So that's in the center, that's the new um, Museum of Poetry building um, next to the tomb um, garden. And you could see that this is the, the density of uh, Songyang County Urban Center. And that's how the, the museum is looking like. Well, it's very small scale uh, museum. Um, it, it, it has very um, a, a kind of a, a, a small footprint um, next to this memorial um, tomb garden. And so the design is actually kind of uh, integrating the memorial garden and, and exhibition in interior exhibition spaces together. Um, and um, the, um, the building is actually stretched up from the ground level, kind of uh, um, um, looking back into this memorial garden. That's how the uh, ground floor building, um, yeah, ground floor with this memorial garden and the building is only standing on two um, fire stairs. It's a public space, so it, it requires two fire exits. And also um, the, these two fire stairs um, exits are functioning as the uh, structural columns of the whole building. And that's on the second, uh, actually the, um, um, what well, the ground level and first to third level stacking up. Um, that's the section looking, uh, cutting through the, um, the whole composition. So, um, and, and the other important thing that we also want to preserve all the trees on the site. Um, these trees have been here for, uh, for, for decades and, and it's part of the kind of uh, uh, the, um, the memory of our site um, and also requested by our neighbor, this lady, um, that because their building, it's a residential building, has windows on the side. So um, for our public building, we're not allowed to open any windows um, facing their, their windows. So that's the building um, on this site. Um, it, it has this solid wall kind of uh, um, as requested. Um, that's how the alley is looking like. And the whole volume, um, museum volume is lifted up from the ground level to kind of open up the whole um, ground field as the memorial garden and also create kind of a, a, a open view um, with our neighbors, with our um, um, streets and, and the city and the, the urban center. So that's the alley. But when the building started to turn around, you will see that it, it, it shifted um, into transparent trans or translucent light um, facade, kind of a more airy and light facade um, as a public space. That's how the building is turning around. And that's the main. Um, front um, facade. Uh, that's how it's um, stretching up. So the whole, I, I would say the, the whole museum um, compound is the, uh, the building, not only the building, but also the building 
um, together with its memorial garden. And in this project, the ground garden, the memorial garden is the main concept of the, the whole project. Um, actually, if you um, if, if you look at the, this what, from this picture, you can tell there are like layers of um, transparency or translucency on the public side. So it create kind of a, a different level of translucency or um, transparency in and out of this garden and towards its. Um, urban um, neighborhood. And on this diagram, um, by preserving all the trees on the side, actually, um, we kind of create a loop to enter this, the, the whole garden. And then you take this root and the, the whole garden is kind of a, um, winding into a, a kind of a double layer of courtyards. So you enter the space uh, following the, uh, the traces of the trees, you enter to uh, the final destination that would be the tomb, um, the, um, the, the uh, memorial um, space. So there's always um, in this diagram, it's showing that we have the kind of a, um, different, uh, the gradient of transparency along all these glass facade to create a kind of a, um, um, a always changing and shifting um, experience, experiment when you walk through the, the route and also create different layers of transparency um, with, uh, with, with its, the center of the memorial garden, between the center of the, the garden with the county urban center. It's also more, um, more or less like setting up a barrier to introduce the visitors, you know, to take a long kind of a narrow down uh, route to enter into its center. That's the um, entrance when you first enter, um, this the, um, the whole compound. And if you walk ahead, you will see this, that the glass here in front of you is all transparent and you you still kind of uh, uh, seeing the city, the, the urban, the neighbors, the cars, people walking by. And on your right hand, um, it's it's opaque and kind of blocking the view. So when you enter from the, the streets to this memorial garden, your first sight would still be the street. Um, but if you keep going and then the, um, the panels on your right hand, um, it starts from opaque and shift into um, translucent. And and if you keep on going and then it, it from opaque and then eventually become transparent. And on the other hand, on um, the glass starts from totally transparent, 100% transparent and into kind of a blurry and translucent, eventually blocking the view toward the city and kind of guide your view into the center garden. So the idea of this gray and um, kind of a gradual gradient of translucency on the, on the glass is to bring your view, your sight. Um, when you first enter to the, this place, your, your mind is probably still outside on the street and kind of bring your mind and your sight from the streets into the center of the garden. And, and it's only within, with the trees and also with the memorial site. So that's how you walk into the central space and finally you landed on this uh, central uh, tomb, uh, the, the kind of a, a central memorial garden and that's the tomb uh, site. So the play of this um, translucency is that we, we also want to introduce, we, it, it, it's a sem similar language we apply to the um, to the building facade as well. And, and it does give, give the, the whole volume kind of a, um, 
light, airy uh, space, uh, kind of a, um, um, appearance. And with all this um, poetry, um, each chapter pages is um, kind of um, etched on the stone panels um, next to the seating seats, the seating bench. And it's like the chapters or, or pages of a book, but also works as um, kind of a, um, memorial um, panels as well, dedicating to the history of the poetry in the county. And that's how um, the gradient of uh, translucency also reflects on the upper levels, like um, um, when it's facing the memorial garden and it gives a, a different um, um, reflection um, or view towards the trees. Uh, or on the other hand, the trees are also becoming an, a, a um, an image or landscape uh, painting on this to the interior space. Um, next project is, um, and this is a, a music by a uh, studio by the sea. It's for a music foundation to, uh, for their recording studio and uh, music salon space on the second floor, uh, recording studio and in on the ground level. And so in this, this is dedicated to a, the spirit of music um, and next to the ocean. Um, so in this project, uh, we, we want to take the, um, the amphitheater and as kind of a symbol for performance, but also break it up into four pieces um, as, you know, the kind of a, um, into different segments of performing um, areas, spaces, and stretch them up vertically. So they become either a ground level um, half uh, amphitheater facing the ocean or two stairs for the building. And the stairs can also work as kind of a, a casual, performing uh, space too. And um, another one is a roof terrace, of course, on the, on the top of a roof and, and facing the ocean as well. Um, so in this project, it is, it's basically a square volume of um, programmatic um, rooms, like the recording studio, um, tech rooms and music salon uh, or office area, um, but all kind of a connected and uh, um, intersected by these four amphitheater segments as uh, um, performing uh, fragments. That's how the composition is looking like facing the ocean and uh, also to the other side of the, uh, the ocean. So on the ground level, we have the, the major part, the major um, um, amphitheater, 180, 180 degree, you know, the uh, um, half of the amphitheater on the ground level um, next to the, the beach and facing the ocean. So this could become the central stage for performance on, on the beach in summer times, or it could also just become a, its own leisure space, casual performing um, space. And that's the internal stair, um, two small 30 degree segments of the amphitheater coming into the space can work as stair for, for music salon, um, recording studio on the ground level, a dark room, and the roof terrace facing the ocean. This could become a, a even a, a performing space in the nighttime in summer.
So you, you would you, you could tell that this is a um, kind of a um, interplay of a square volume with the fragments of amphitheater of um, performing elements. Um, but in, in, in this way, it becomes its own kind of um, volume or statue on the beach. And um, it, um, it could be a, a host, it could be hosting a summer um, music festival um, with a central space as its stage and also can take the whole building into a stage uh, together with its technical support, supporting rooms. Um, we want to take this project to say that um, this type of uh, cultural projects um, in the in the natural setting, you know, on the beach next to the the ocean, it could be um, an architecture um, accommodating different functions, different um, technical um, programs, and it could also become a structure, almost like. Um, for you know, kind of a, for festivals, for different um, events on the beach, for public um, um, events, and um, also this structure can also become a monument um, next to the ocean for music, for 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 um, for for public activities too. So this was under construction. And hopefully this will be finished by this year or maybe next year. Um, uh, my last project is um, a, also another cultural space in the um, um, natural setting in the mountain. This is the mountain with um, uh, a temple and um, a, a small village and that's our site. So this tea space becomes um, it's 800 square meters uh, for tea production for um, for tea house and uh, also a, um, a visiting lounge for uh, for for visitors for tourists and the site is um, a flat face um, this is directing to the north. And by the south, it's actually facing to our temple and, and on the mountain. So this space is, um, besides the functions, the, the, the functional program, um, it also uh, sitting on such a site, it also carries as a um, kind of a, um, a cultural um, metaphor um, to take this building, you know, um, looking back to the temple and also addressing to the tea culture in general. It's the mountain and on the other side of the cliff, actually in the valley, there will be the county urban center as well. Um, so the whole architecture is uh, is first of all it's taking the uh, the site as a, you know the flat site and taking the program into a uh, simple rectangular box um, sitting on this flat land and facing directly to uh, north and south. So it's also functioning like a kind of kind of a directing to the orientations. And, and back to this, the south, it's looking back to the back to the mountain and to the gate of the temple. And in this in this whole composition, um, we also want to introduce. If you look at these eight uh, light tubes, these are bringing the light into the internal space. But these eight light tunnels are addressing to seven times, seven hours in the day, in the summer solstice day. 
And so here I would like to pause and talk a bit about the, the culture in general that, um, you know, summer solstice is the, the time of the, the day of the year when we have the maximum length of our daytime, right? And uh, um, this is the, uh, the time in the whole year that the sun reaches its maximum altitude. Um, and so around the world, there are so many, there are many um, cultures and um, religions and, and, and activities um, dedicated to this uh, special day of the year, summer solstice. Um, um, and this is also quite important kind of a, a season time in the year for Chinese culture, for Chinese agriculture. Um, and let me also introduce that in the ancient time of China, we have 12 hours instead of a 24 hours. So every hour becomes one Chinese hour. And this is based on the activities of the, the, the animals. You can read from the sunrise to sunset, it's different kind of activity patterns of animals. But in general, it, it gives the idea of the, the earth, the planet, the world is shared by all, um, not, but not only um, human beings. So we want to take the, the seven Chinese hours during the summer solstice time and translate them into our tea space as kind of a dedication or um, ceremony to the nature, to the sun. And so all these eight tunnels, these two are the same. So seven angles are based on different sun angles during summer solstice day, uh, day and based on different on, on the seven Chinese hours. So from the sun rise and um, this is the noon and it turning around, it's turning around to sunset. So the light tunnels cutting through the space, it's always bring in light, direct or indirect light into the central uh, visitor lounge. But the angles are actually coordinated with a specific sunlight angle. Um, in a very specific day of the year. I think, it, yeah, all this information, it takes a bit time to, um, to process. <laughs> um, but yes, um, um, and the program layout on, on this uh, rectangular box is that this is the tea production space um, by procedure, by production procedure. And in the center is the uh, visitor's lounge can, who can observe this production uh, sequence. On the other side is the, uh, a, a different size of tea houses um, looking towards the landscape and mountain. That's how the building uh, looks like from, from the uh, tea plantation. And it's turning around to the other side. And also um, um, these light tunnels appear to be different uh, angles and different kind of uh, um, forms stretching out from the program volume. And um, so the roof is covered with a very thin level uh, layer of uh, water. And the whole building looking back to the temple and the mountain is actually becoming a kind of a monumental platform um, with the, the the tea production, tea tasting uh, space embedded underneath. And that's how it's looking um, from the temple direction, looking to this um, tea space. That's the um, main entrance to enter the interior space. the entrance and then we and uh, we are on the tea um, production the tea making um, workshop site and this is a large room and um, 
intersected by these different um, light tunnels, indicating the different hours um, in the afternoon. Um, I also want to explain a bit on this pattern on, on the side walls. Here we do use the perforated pattern, um, perforated brick walls. Um, and this is as sunshades for the western, uh, for, for the west side for, for, the, uh, for, uh, for the afternoons. Um, and these perforation patterns are actually according to the hieroglyph of the people who are living in this region. This is um, in, this, in this county, the main population, uh, uh, the major inhabitants are sure minority and they, they have paragraph instead of a text in this sure culture. So we want to take um, the paragraph from this um, sure minority and kind of a, on this elevation, it's all according to the altitude of different elements. Um, on the top, it's sun and, and going down to the land on the ground level. So if you look at the wall, um, the perforation, it's giving kind of a functional uh, shading, but it also actually uh, functioning as a cultural or even image wall. You can identify the text, the elements, the drawing. It's like a, a drawing or painting on this wall. And that's the tea space. And in the center of this uh, visitor lounge, if you walk through, you, um, you can watch the tea production, uh, the space, how, how it, the tea is produced. And both of these um, cultural walls are um, functioning as the background, either to close the views towards the tea house or kind of as a background for the um, tea production, tea making. So on the rooftop, um, this is a, um, as the, the tunnels stretching out from the rooftop, and with a very thin uh, layer of water surface. Um, if you walk on the rooftop, it's almost like a um, um, ceremonial um, um, walkway going through um, north to south. And with the light uh, tunnels stretching out. And um, this is almost um, as the sunlight is frozen or um, free, it's uh, freezed on top of the, the roof. So it's like a frozen of sunlight or frozen of time. And we want to make this as a uh, statues or um, monument dedicated to, to, the, to the sun, to the nature. And also kind of having a dialogue with, the, with our setting with the temple and the tea plantation and the culture and spirit of tea of Zen in general. Okay, so that's, that's um, all my talk today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Xu. And um, Simone has uh, some um, problems with uh, his uh, connection. So I'm going to jump in uh, asking you some questions. So first of all, thank you for your lecture uh, and sorry for the little delay we had. Um, I would like to uh, know more about uh, your relation uh, with the Chinese tradition since uh, you mentioned uh, the north-south orientation of the tea building. Uh, the animals as a representation of time or the traditional poetry and so on. So I'm especially curious about the way you deal uh, with numbers, especially uh, since you mentioned the number seven, for instance, which is a very important uh, number in the Chinese traditional culture. So how you design with numbers? Do you use Chinese numerology also to design the measurements of the rooms, heights and dimension of uh, the building? 
Um, um, that's a, a very interesting question. Um, I didn't realize that I do have the seven number in my project, which is also, a, which is very lucky number, <laughs> um, both seven and eight. Um, so I, I would say that it's not, um, you know, the uh, number, it, it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't the, the main purpose um, in this project. It was more kind of a, um, from taking our culture in general, culture and history, and it would be the resources for us, for architecture to explore further and deeper into our culture, especially, you know, with this um, tea space, um, it's a small size building. It wasn't very complicated function, but we want to take this project as an opportunity to kind of create a dialogue um, besides accommodating the functional purpose um, program, we also um, would like to take this building as the opportunity to kind of uh, make it, um, to, to create a dialogue with the culture and also to create a kind of a um, um, met, almost like a um, metaphor or um, uh, it's becoming a monument as well, a statue monument as well. And similar to the other project, the, the music studio by the sea, I think the building in, in, in this type of a surrounding, it has this um, opportunity to become a um, monument on uh, carrying out its kind of a specific cultural um, message um, and, and yeah, with, uh, to create kind of a di dialogue with the, with the nature, with its own surrounding, with either water or with the mountain um, in general. Thank you. And uh, another question from uh, Simone, who wrote me um, um, that uh, he would like to uh, know more about the um, uh, in the industrial heritage, because um, he would like to know how you um, reflect um, um, the industrial heritage into your um, um, memory, let's say. And um, because um, we figured out uh, during these uh, lectures, uh, the cycle of lectures, that um, you are um, really um, interested on, on industrial heritage as a uh, way to also work on the on the, on your um, historical uh, kind of memory, since uh, the industrial um, revolution was also a cultural revolution, uh, and um, so. For example, Zen Chen uh, during the first uh, conference. Um, uh, explain how the vector architects also worked um, and are working on, on this uh, topic. So how you um, relate with the, with the industrial heritage? Um, what type of industrial? You mean the urban or actually the rural industri industrial? Um, I think for us, we are mainly working in, you know, in past seven years, we've been working in Songyang County in the rural, um, um, you know, by taking architecture to revitalize the rural area. And since I've been giving many lectures, talks about the rural, the Songyang story. So today I, I would also like to shift to um, something different. Actually, we have one project in, in Songyang County, but it's in the urban urban um, center. Um, and when we were working in the rural context, it's um, we, we always work with the its cultural um, history, um, the background, and in each project, um, there's it's um, besides again besides this. Um, um, functional requirements, each building becomes a cultural identity for its village or for its site. So that's our, um, how do you say, like, um, I think, um, experience or, and something that we found really can um, carrying a, a very um, heavy um, message, a very uh, extensive message in, 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 in architecture when you were working in the rural um, 
culture is inevitable. And on the other hand, if you uh, can integrate architecture and, and carry the, the cultural message, it, it, it will blend in really uh, merge or integrate with its uh, village uh, neighborhood community. Um, or, a, or the, 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 um, the, the building would be much more appreciated by the, the villagers and the community because the respect towards their culture and in general, right? And we do find this is uh, um, um, also very um, helpful for us to understand how um, architecture um, can um, become a translation of culture in general. And that's how we, we would like to work. Also look back into uh, urban, into, into cities, how culture can, can also become the resources uh, for architecture um, or incentive, inspiration for architecture. And so in general, I, 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 I would say that um, taking architecture as culture scape. Um, it's for both urban and rural and um, it's not the culture and history is not only um, uh, in, the, in the rural villages, but also in our cities. Um, so we just have to explore um, deeper in, into our neighborhood. Yeah, I meant uh, uh, rural, uh, and um, that's interesting. Um, uh, Simone wrote me also that um, he um, noticed a particular uh, care on uh, uh, on the on the rural um, the last rural uh, project, for instance, uh, where um, a working space uh, became a kind of monument. And, uh, and that's uh, interesting. So um, is it because um, is located in the, in, the, in the countryside, in the rural uh, spaces, so it uh, had the possibility uh, to uh, be a monument, so free orientation and so on? Or uh, yes, what's your, um, um, your uh, let's say, intention? On, on I think project. for this project, it's in the uh, um, in this um, sure minority region, and and also like I introduced in, in earlier that on uh, just above our um, tea space, there is a temple, right uh, from from uh, Tang Dynasty. So and this whole area is the tea plantation. So in general, on, on the site, like as an extension from the temple, this tea space already carries this um, kind of a um, assignment <laughs> or um, application as a tea um, cultural and spiritual space, right? Um, addressing to its uh, surrounding and, and and in, like uh, tea has, a, it's a cultural uh, concept in general, like wine. Um, yeah, and, it's kind um, of a ritual, let's say. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And so it's not only about the production, the making of tea or the tasting, the drinking of tea, um, but rather it's this process gives you idea or gives more understanding of agriculture, culture, nature, um, in, in, or history in general. Um, so we want to take this, um, on this on the site, it's beautiful, beautiful site. Um, and, and we want to take this opportunity that, um, the, again, the architecture could be both a um, functional uh, space and also a um, cultural, uh, spiritual monument. Perfect, thank you. So Luca Fabri um, should have a, a question for you uh, while I will check on, on the social media if uh, someone uh, wrote some questions from the live streaming. So Luca. Hi, hi, good morning. 
Good afternoon. I'm Luca. Thank you for your interesting lecture, first of all. Um, I have a question for you, which is uh, related to the relationship actually, uh, between new architecture and the typical futon area, um, you know, with its uh, density and its uh, informal atmosphere. Uh, and actually, just a little bit introduction. I, I just finished a design studio at the Politecnico di Milano together with uh, Xi'an Jiaotong University of China. It was very interesting. Uh, it was created by Professor Pierre Lancrasé. And the studio uh, focused on the Sichang market in, uh, in Xi'an uh, mm -hmm. and its uh, surroundings. So um, it was uh, an interesting project uh, and a very complex one. Uh, because the target was to define a, a dialogue uh, between um, the new architecture and the pre-existing city. Um, in, in order to protect you know, the historical heritage uh, and also the informal atmosphere of, of the, the area. Uh, and actually, I have to say that in fact, we also created a second city layer. So it was interesting, your first project to me because I actually found the, in a very simple way, of course, uh, the same solutions. But um, my question is, um, I mean, you showed very interesting, unique and advanced project, uh, you know, detachment from the ground, transparency, also opacity, uh, preservation of the nature, very interesting tools. Um, I would like to ask you, which is in your opinion, the proper way to manage in the future parts of the city belonging to the Hutong architecture and how to solve all the social issues that can possibly occur because of the integration of a very different architecture in a pre-existing city with thousands of years sometime. Thank you. Right, right. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, you know, for the Baitasi Hutong district, um, um, I agree that this is the um, high density of the courtyards and very historical fabric and uh, very historical kind of traditional building typology in, in this whole region. Um, but you can, um, you know, like the first image uh, shows the um, pagoda, the white um, Buddhism pagoda, the 50 meters tall Kirby volume that was built over 700 years ago. And it has already merged into its context and become the historical monument uh, landmark in, the, in, the, in this region. Um, and um, besides the pagoda, there were also um, other type of modern um, buildings in this um, scattering around in this neighborhood. Besides the Hutun area that we, we renovated, it used to be at two stories of um, cement block built in the, in the 90s, right? So, I mean, if you look at the historical uh, fabric uh, uh, in the city, um, we're not only talking about it's frozen at 700 years ago, or it's frozen, you know, at 500 years ago, or a thousand back to thousand years ago. It's actually layers of buildings from different eras, um, even from the recent decade. And uh, so I, I would like to take this complexity, you know, really the layers, depths of the layers um, of the historical district. By preservation, it doesn't mean that this is frozen, it's untouchable, and it needs more innovative kind of a, um, uh, and more sensitive alternation or just kind of a new intervention into uh, this area, into the historical district. It, it's still, they, they still have, um, um, I think there's still quite, uh, um, quite a lot um, inhabitants in this area. So it's not just void. It's not just a kind of empty museum. It's really uh, people living here. So with the daily life, it still needs like new additions to add in the new layers. Um, so instead of to demolish, you know, into 
uh, and to rebuild with the new buildings. Um, um, there's always opportunities to look into the um, original courtyards, the, 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 uh, the modern buildings for new possibilities. For example, the Hutong Gallery is originally to be a, was a residential. So it, it has the opportunity to, to become um, a public exhibition space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So um, another question is about courtyards. So we um, we listen from from um, from you and from the other uh, lecturers that uh, uh, the courtyard it's um, a key topic um, and. Uh, um, traditionally, but also nowadays you're trying to figure out how to. I would say also play with courtyards. So um, I would like to um, to know how you um, how you are uh, uh, dealing and working with courtyards, uh, and um, because uh, the, the 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 project about the, the poetry garden, uh, uh, for example, was working on this topic. And um, and so I'm curious about um, also the freedom you have on on this topic, uh, and um, so if if you yes thank you and uh, and for this question Marco I think we have to go back to the um, the very um, beginning of the courtyard right um, courtyard is even now uh, these days we're looking at. Um, um, courtyard buildings as kind of a traditional building um, typology, almost like it's fixed format. But the original courtyard was built to kind of have a void in the space to create kind of, a, well, instead of a, um, a, 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 a open space on the street sharing with neighbors, it's rather a courtyard inside within your own residential building. So a central courtyard is always the key in the in the uh, typical traditional residence uh, houses um, and to bring in light, bring in um, air and uh, uh, and in general it also create a, a um, connection, you know, looking up to the sky. Um, so it, it has a um, it it within your own house you have this kind of uh, um, um, dialogue or connection with the nature. Um, and uh, um, I would like to say that even though, you know, for the Hutong Gallery, the first project, uh, we're not working with the typical courtyard buildings in Beijing, right? Um, instead of we work with a, a more um, modern um, or um, uh, just, a, just a very um, conventional uh, blocky volume, but it, within this project, we also um, wanted to um, introduce the, 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 the concept of courtyard by adding two corner yards into this block. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it's corner or central courtyard, it's always a, um, a dialogue, you know, um, for, for the nature and, and um, and, and also um, bring in light, air um, in general um, into the space. And, and for the second project, the Memorial um, Garden, we do work with the, um, take this whole Memorial Garden and kind of make it a, a, a into a linear loop into a central space. We also think this is a concept of, of courtyard as well. Um, but it just kind of a taking a different form and introduce the layers of space um, to arrive at the central uh, destination. Um, and even by the last project, the, um, the tea space with the light tunnels into the space, the voids coming into the central space, I think it's also the, the idea uh, or the concept uh, or the kind of modification of courtyards. Right when you have a tunnel, you bring in light, bring in the the the, the breeze, uh, the air, even the rainwater into the central space. So again, it's also kind of a courtyard um, spirit. 
Yes, it's uh, it's very interesting because I would say that the, the especially the central courtyard is a kind of a, a denial uh, um, of the landscape because uh, you try to enclose the the landscape itself into the building um, while detaching the the, the central space. Uh, from the outside, but you are saying the opposite, and that's interesting. You are saying that, um, uh, in a sense, you are trying to open the courtyard. Um, uh, let's say conceptually, but also uh, by saying that uh, the nature could uh, enter uh, in in some ways, so lights, water, and and so on. That's very interesting. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, so we have another question. So um, Nadja would like to know um, how uh, this, um, sorry, because it's in Italian, so I'm translating. <laughs> um, so how um, these uh, technological um, uh, models from, uh, from, um, from the, um, the West, uh, let's say, uh, influence, are influencing uh, the way you design and how uh, these uh, technological models you talked about um, relate with, uh, with the, the traditional um, Chinese culture. And uh, she, for example, um, she's uh, mentioning the, um, the, the theater, the health theater, the music studio on the sea, which is, by the way, uh, it seems also visually half uh, a kind of Western project, half and half, I would say. Also, the people are not Chinese and in the renders. So how you, how, how you um, communicate with the West culture? Um, exactly. This, this is the project, um, and like I said, it's dedicated to, it's for a music foundation, it's actually for a rock music foundation. And so it does carry a kind of a Western culture um, um, message in, in this project. Um, and it's different from the tea, you know, um, or from the Museum of Poetry or from the Hutong Gallery. Um, so each one, um, I think when architecture as culture scape, I think it's, um, it means that its own culture, right? So um, it's really based on the kind of, uh, um, the culture character or the culture content from its own program and from the users, from the activities, the functions in, in, in each building and each one is different. Um, that's why, you know, in this um, music studio, we do one, you know, for a rock uh, music foundation for the rock performance, we, we, we took this um, a breakup, a fragmented, uh, a broken amphitheater <laughs> into this building. Um, and uh, kind of as a metaphor um, for this, uh, for the for, for the for the music uh, spirit, and it's also, um, it's also working, um, you know, not only kind of the message, but also the function of um, a fragment of amphitheater can work uh, to integrate the, the beach, the ocean, green the beach and ocean back to the building. So it's not only, you know, from the building, you're looking out to, to, the, to the surrounding, it's rather kind of a, um, bring the beach as the audience seat and the ocean as the background. So the whole building is rather a kind of musical structure um, for the festivals. And again, the nature enter the building. Exactly, thank you. <laughs> so um Simone uh, are you are you in so I think we we could um, um, we, yeah we could uh, end the the, the the lecture with an outro by Simone or uh, another question I don't know I think there are no time for us <laughs>
Yes, I probably, I don't know if, I think there are no questions and also I will handle if my connection will allow me to handle <laughs> because it's a bit unstable today anyway. Thank you to have been joining us today, Shutian. It has been a pleasure for us. And also I think that we are really touching what's going on uh, in a contemporary China about architecture. So uh, thank you everyone and uh, thank you Shu Tintian again. And uh, everyone don't miss our next lecture with Westland Studio next Saturday. So goodbye. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.